All right, let's go uh, a little bit to the facial bones. The first one we'll talk about is the maxilla. Uh, the maxilla is, is, is a keystone of the facial bones because most of the other facial bones are touching it, except the one is not, definitely not touching, is the mandible. So the maxilla is up here. It's the upper, where the upper rows of the teeth are. Actually, the place where the teeth go in, into the maxilla right here, the teeth sockets, so to speak, those are known as the alveolar margins. Since we're right here, we can actually feel the roof of the mouth, and the roof of the mouth, the front part of the roof of the mouth, the heart palate, is at the palatine process. If we move posterior in the back portion, we'll get to the next slide, and that here is the back portion of the heart palate, and that's the palatine bone itself. It's a bone by itself. So the front one is the maxilla, it's the palatine process. So you reach posterior, it's called the palatine bone. Then I'm not going to be too worried about the zygomatic process, but that is where we have the maxilla uh, touch right in here into the zygomatic bone itself. Two small bones that we have are the lacrimal bone right here on the in medial portion of the orbit. And that is um, a place where the tears, they get produced out here on the eye and the lacrimal gland. They move across the eyeball, which let's imagine there's an eyeball, and then they drain into nasal cavity through the nasal lacrimal canal. And that is on the lacrimal bone. It's a very small one. It's very hard to find. The nasal bone is very simple, actually, because it is uh, where the nose is, the hard part, the bony part, the upper portion of the nose. Below, on the front, we have cartilage that makes up the rest of the nose. The zygomatic bone is our cheekbone right here, and we can just take it out of the skull, and we have one right here. There's multiple processes attached to it. The one that I'm mostly wanting to worry about this semester is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which will meet up with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. We talked a little bit about the concha, the superior middle concha, the turbinates. We can see them a little bit up here, or we can see them, the wiggly, the round stuff, the round lines that come up in the uh, top portion here. Those are uh, the super middle concha, the turbinates that make the air circulate as it enters the nose. So we can see the one down here, the inferior nasal concha. They make the, the air go around as we enter the nose, slowing the air down, warming it up, and also moistening it. Then the vomer bone is a plow-shaped bone. Look at this, is a weird picture here. But this here is the bottom of the nose. This here is the mandible, the, brand, uh, the, the purplish part. And that red thing sticking through internally, going backwards, posterior, like a plow, is the vomer bone. It forms the medial floor of the nasal cavity. So it's the middle line at the bottom of the nose. And lastly here, no, two more to go, but the mandible is the lower jaw bone. Well, this is crucial for chewing, so it's important there's muscle attachments here. Um, the, but uh, there's also joint that forms, and the mandibular condyle, which is right up in the back here, forms a joint mid with, the, um, with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And, um, uh, yeah, that's a temporal mandibular joint that is formed there. Let's take this out of context here. This was the, the mandible condyle. We have a coronoid process that sticks out anteriorly to that, and that will be a muscle attachment for the temporalis muscle, pulling on the mandible as it closes the mouth. Then as we grab the mandible from the front, we have the body that reaches around uh, anteriorly. Uh, the ramus is the flatter portion that goes up into the condyles. Um, and we also have alveolar margins, which are the T sockets here as well. Sometimes they call them alveolar process also, so you got to be aware of both of those. Lastly, here's the hyoid bone, and that's a free-floating bone in the anterior neck 
inferior to the mandible but superior to the atom level which is the larynx it's a weird horseshoe shaped bone it has no bony attachments only muscles and ligaments and this bone helps swallowing all right let's get going with that and next we'll reach to the facial muscles you hey